I'm John Holdren. I'm the director of the Woods Hole Research Center and Teresa and John Hines, professor of environmental policy at Harvard University. Uh, we're here to talk about a report that an international group has done uh, for the United Nations uh, on the topic of confronting climate change, avoiding the unmanageable, and managing the unavoidable. And I'm Rosina Bierbaum. I'm the dean of the School of Natural Resources and Environment at the University of Michigan. We think this report is different than many other reports that have come out. We've taken the science that the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, has produced as the gospel and built on that a number of recommendations to tackle the mitigation issue that is controlling the growth of greenhouse gases and the adaptation issue that is coping with changes that are already underway and will only get worse. So we come up with a number of win-win solutions we talk both about mitigation and adaptation, and we also pick a target that we think should not be exceeded in terms of temperature or concentrations in the atmosphere that will be roughly two to two and a half degrees or 450 to 500 parts per million, because we think that might be approaching dangerous. In fact, uh, many of us think that the impact of climate change that are already occurring amount to dangerous human interference in the climate system. And the real question now is whether we will be smart enough to avoid catastrophic interference with the climate system. The basis of the target that we picked, two to two and a half degrees Celsius above the pre-industrial level, is that above that sort of temperature increase, the danger of really unmanageable, in fact, catastrophic climate change uh, rises very sharply. So we think it would be imprudent in the extreme for global society to allow the greenhouse gas concentrations to reach the level that would produce temperatures above that. So for example, at one and a half degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels, we think that we will lose the coral reefs. At about two degrees above pre-industrial levels, we suspect that uh, we will tip Greenland into melting, which could lead to several meters of sea level rise over the next century. And at two and a half degrees Celsius, we will start to lose agricultural productivity in both the temperate zones and the tropical zones. So some of the greener, wetter, warmer Earth ideas are not proving out to be true as you look at the devil in the details of how climate change interacts with other environmental stresses and pollution. And the core of the messages in this report revolve around what specific things we need to be doing to avoid overshooting the target we've described and to adapt to the extent of climate changes that we're not actually available, uh, able to avoid. Uh, in terms of the sorts of measures that need to be taken, we think that the emissions of greenhouse gases around the world can't be allowed to go much higher than their current levels and by 2015 to 2020 actually need to be declining and ultimately by the year 2100 need to be down at a level of one-fourth to one-third of what the emissions are today. The most problematic of all of those emissions is the carbon dioxide that's coming from fossil fuel burning and from deforestation. And we list in our report a whole range of measures to reduce the carbon dioxide emitted both from the energy system and from uh, deforestation in the tropics. But as John's saying, change is underway now, and so we do need to begin to cope with these changes as well as prepare for more. So if you look at the incidence of droughts and floods, the increased precipitation events, both total amounts of rainfall and the way it's being delivered, you can see that we will experience many more expensive disasters in the future, such that we are speculating that perhaps tens of millions of environmental refugees will be the result of the rising sea levels in the years to come. So clearly we need to prepare for those kinds of changes. Anticipatory adaptation, as we call it, is something that will be very important. And we don't manage these kinds of things well now. In fact, in the year 2005, uh, the Earth endured some third of a trillion dollars of in environmental weather-related disasters. That's a very, very expensive thing. A lot of human life lost property lost, economic damage, and those numbers will grow in the years to come unless we pursue some of the win-win opportunities that are described in this report. And yes, we do remain optimistic that this can be done, but it is also urgent. Indeed, the real good news in this report is that there is a wide variety of ways to reduce emissions of greenhouse gases that are wrecking the climate in a manner that not only achieves reduced risks from climate change, 
but also reduces other environmental impacts, produces new job opportunities, helps economic development, and contributes in general to a more sustainable world for everybody. We think that therefore the climate change issue should be seen not just as a challenge, but as an opportunity to move the world toward a more sustainable trajectory and one with big benefits for everybody on the planet. And we think the United Nations has a particular role to play, especially in helping the poorest and most vulnerable in the world. Indeed, it is the developing countries where these impacts will be felt the most. They have the least capacity to adapt. And the United Nations can help them with technology. It can help them uh, conduct vulnerability assessments so they actually understand what parts of their systems are susceptible to climate change and how they can best cope with it. And very clearly, we will have to help them with funds to adapt to the changing climate. Finally, and most importantly, the UN can help lead us to a new international negotiations to help the world address this.